When he was about eight years old, Leonard Hayflick had a scare that caused him to run to his mother in tears and imprinted itself vividly on his memory. Hiking one day with friends in Cobbs Creek Park, near his home in southwest Philadelphia, he slipped when crossing the creek on stepping stones. One of his sneakers got soaked. The young boy immediately panicked. Polio is spread through contaminated water, and the terror of the paralyzing, sometimes fatal disease was acute in the mid-1930s. Hayflick sat down, crying, and took his shoe and sock off, desperately rubbing his foot with the nearest chunk of dirt or grass he could find. He went home to his mother, who tried to comfort him. His fears were understandable. What had been a rare disease in the 19th century had become all too common in the 20th. Annual summer surges in polio cases had mothers keeping their children out of public swimming pools. Not even the most privileged Americans were safe. Indeed, because the wealthy grew up in cleaner environments, they were less likely to be exposed to polio and to develop protective antibodies as children. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the man who was running the nation from a wheelchair, had been paralyzed by the dread disease at age 39. In fact, infectious diseases of all kinds were a real threat in the 1930s. Children died of scarlet fever, of influenza, of tuberculosis, of measles. There were no reliable vaccines to prevent these common maladies. The first antibiotics wouldn't be prescribed until the late 1930s. Hayflick remembers the orange signs from Philadelphia health authorities that would appear periodically on the front doors of afflicted households, proclaiming in huge black font, This house is quarantined because of the presence of measles, or another infectious disease. But Hayflick had not contracted polio from his brush with the water of Cobbs Creek. He was luckier than thousands of American children in the 1930s. Hayflick came from humble beginnings. He was born on May 20, 1928, to Nathan and Edna Hayflick, the new young owners of a narrow brick row house in a working-class neighborhood in southwest Philadelphia. Hayflick's parents were part of a Jewish migration across the Schuylkill River out of the slums of South Philadelphia that began before World War I and continued in the 1920s. The new arrivals launched thriving synagogues and Hebrew schools. The sidewalks were wide and the families young. The schools were less than first-rate, but that did not tamp down the ambitions of many families who were determined to build better lives. Hayflick's own father, Nathan, when he was eight years old, had been living in a South Philadelphia row house, occupied by 13 family members, abutting a rough red-light district. In this densely packed neighborhood of dark cobblestone streets and alleys that often lacked pavement or sewers, filth and excrement stuck in the cracks, frozen during the winter, and then thawed in the spring. Single outhouses served dozens of people. The Philadelphia authorities, notorious for their indifference and corruption, did virtually nothing to improve conditions. In fact, they paid attention to sanitation in South Philadelphia only when outbreaks of cholera, typhus, or diphtheria blighted the area and threatened to spread. The crowding and filth made the slum a perfect incubator for the devastating influenza pandemic of 1917 through 18, when hospitals, homes, and morgues were overwhelmed and corpses spilled into the street. The Hayflick clan seemed to emerge unscathed, although Nathan's mother soon died of tuberculosis. Nathan, in his mid teens went to work driving the horse-drawn family milk cart. Within a few years, he had landed a job at the Climax Company, a leading Philadelphia denture designing firm. He would advance to become a master denture designer, serving clients including Albert Einstein. Lunching one day at a popular diner, 
he met Edna Silver, a quiet, thoughtful young beauty who was also from South Philadelphia, and who, like him, was the child of Eastern European immigrants. The couple married in 1927 and moved across the river.